an excommunicated army. Like, investigation level observant. Like, what are you doing with your time on Twitter? <laughs> Oh. Hi, welcome to my totally legit new show. My name is Angelina and today we have a lot of K-pop news to cover, notably how Twitter has taken celebrity dating suspicions to wild levels with Beze or Suze, Suzy, Busy. We also have Cosmic Girls photo books seemingly plagiarizing BTS, Icon members unfortunate car accident with a drunk driver and A.T.'s Hong Jung's backlash over his hairstyle featured in this teaser photo. So if you only like one of these subjects, all of these subjects, or anything in between, I have separated this video into super fancy sections that you can scroll through in the time bar. Or watch all of them so you don't fuck with my watch time. <laughs> I'm kidding though, that's what the sections are there for. <laughs> So we're going to start this video actually with a new segment that I would like to introduce, which is unofficially titled, Whack Ass Things I Found on Stan Twitter. <laughs> I'm open to title suggestions, by the way, so let me know if you have any suggestions. Basically things that like wouldn't really qualify as news, but still like really interesting to talk about nevertheless. So I have been sent an alarming amount of threads of people on Stan Twitter who are mad convinced that Rosé, oh I'm sorry, Rosé from Blackpink and Susie, former member of Miss A, are presumably dating what and you know what some of the evidence that have been gathered is super interesting so i thought we could take a look at some of it so they both flew to paris for paris fashion week or if you really want to piss off the anglos you could say paris they've also worn the same dress we also have instances of them being potentially at the same aquarium but my favorite evidence out of all of this is this wonderful photo of susie drinking a bottle of rosé I mean, I don't know about you, but this proof is pretty undeniable. What really gets me about this is how random it is. Like, why is Su Well, I guess because of all the evidence, but like, it's 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 baffling me. I don't mind talking about second gen idols. I mean, Bad Girl, Good Girl is like an iconic debut, but <laughs> it's just so random to me. I don't know. The fact that there are so many threads, the fact that people are <laughs> finding like the most random things to like tie this all together. And news sites are taking this as well because that's apparently how big it's gotten. But I just wanted to point out that I did think of putting this in my totally legit news show first before those articles came out but I just take forever to edit so mm -hmm. but it is again like I've mentioned this before how fans are super observant like almost too observant like investigation level observant like what are you doing with your time on Twitter <laughs> join a fucking organization or something like oh, seriously your talent is going to waste but it definitely is a testament to how observant fans are to like notice these things right and how much people are willing to stretch things to fit their fantasies like I understand that most of this is all fun and games it's very lighthearted. I think it's really funny but on that note of like shipping idols together I would love to know your opinions on that I know some people are so strongly against it and some people don't really care or they obviously enjoy doing it so I would love to know what your stance is on this I'd love to know I'd love to know where you stand I feel like I have a very interesting opinion on this so maybe I should make a video if you guys are interested like what I genuinely think about shipping idols together <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to move on to WJSN being accused of plagiarizing BTS. Now, they recently posted this photo to their Instagram, which shows their newest photo books called, and this is really interesting, first photo book on and off, persona on, ego off. Now, as an excommunicated army, I can say that I definitely saw the similarities right off the bat. In fact, when this was first sent to me, I thought like, oh, is this like a fan made product? I was confused. Not only with the titles, which aren't inherently a basis to really raise suspicions. I mean, there are plenty of K-pop songs that have the same title. Monster, monster. That's literally the only example I could think of. I should have thought this through. Damn, a second gen stand not being able to make comparisons from second to third gen and fourth gen K-pop. What is going on? <laughs> well, I'll leave it to you. Let me know in the comments down below, K-pop songs with the same names. It happens all the time. So I didn't think that was like too much of a basis. However, like the amount of similarities is definitely, like it's definitely curious. But also the font as well, and just the colors and everything. So it seems that a lot of fans were on the same wavelength as well. In fact, a lot of fans have taken to calling out the company themselves for not having recognized 
the similarities and also for bringing this type of negative attention to the group. So the following tweet reads, Starship, was this really necessary? Our WJSN girls deserve so much better than a photo book that's a little too similar to BTS's album. I mean, yeah, it's fine to use the same words persona and ego, but this whole design is a little too much. The girls don't need that kind of promotion. So yeah, looking at the photos side by side, there are definitely like a lot of parallels, like title parallels, color parallels, font parallels. So I'd love to know what you think because as of right now, Big Hit hasn't released a statement in regards to this and I really wonder if they would. I find often when fans bring up plagiarism, it's a lot different compared to when companies or artists themselves bring up instances of plagiarism because you usually need to have like a legal basis to do so, right? But fans, I mean, fans can take anything and run with it. So I wonder like, is there really a legal basis to this? Ethically, it's a different question, but legally, I wonder if there's really anything there. Okay, so now we're gonna touch briefly on the Icon members, Jinhwan and Junhui who were recently in a car accident with a drunk driver. Now, YG has released the following statement. We've confirmed that a vehicle with some members of Icon inside was in an accident on July 13th on Route 3, heading from Sacheon to Namhae. The injuries sustained by driver A as well as the members of Icon were minor according to doctors, and after receiving emergency treatment, they are currently resting at their dorm. Our agency feels deep concern and heavy responsibility regarding the accident, which arose despite strict internal regulations about driving under the influence. We will be carrying out a thorough internal investigation and taking appropriately severe measures. And the driver A will be faithfully cooperating with police investigations. We sincerely apologize. So it's definitely interesting to note that they never really said who driver A was. However, a lot of fans are definitely speculating that it is their manager. And definitely through the wording of this statement, it seems that that could be the case. I mean, we see they're saying that they have an internal regulation about driving under the influence, which I mean, that's a whole ass law. It, it's, it's just funny to me that there's an internal regulation about that when like logistically, legally, Theoretically, it shouldn't have to be an internal regulation to know that you shouldn't do that. So even though I personally cannot confirm whether or not this is Icon's manager, it seems a lot of fans have taken that story and ran with it, and it seems that a lot of them are really upset because it kind of shows a trend on YG's part for just having shitty managers. I mean, not too long ago, it came to light that Lisa's own manager scammed her out of a really large sum of money, and now we have potentially a manager who's driving under the influence. So either way, little PSA for this video, do not drive under the influence, do not get in a car with someone driving under the influence. If you know you're gonna be drinking, have a backup plan. Okay, so now let's move on to my fancy little segment called I forgot what it was called, K-pop shenanigans, which is basically fun little things that have happened in K-pop this week. Now remember, if there's anything that you guys want me to talk about, something that your idol did and you want me to highlight, feel free to send me a DM. Even if I don't respond, I do try to read all of them, so I'm really sorry about that. Number one, Somi has announced her comeback. Now, I'm definitely really excited, but just from the pictures, I hope to God they aren't at all in line. <laughs> with like what she's gonna do. I'm getting ballad vibes from this and I just feel like that's not, I don't know, that's not what I would expect from her. So apparently the song is called What You Waiting For and it will be released on 2020-07-22. Oh, wait a minute, that's soon, July 22nd? That's a week from now. That's definitely like ballad vibes and I don't know. And not like, I'm not gonna be mad if she does a ballad, but I definitely feel through the teasers of her reality show, we were kind of, seeing something else so i don't know <laughs> we'll see we have day six's jay who released his solo song called pac-man under the name e-a-j which is j backwards i don't know how one would pronounce that yaj ej e-a-j all i know is that no matter how i pronounce something there's always like one or two or 18 people who get really angry and it baffles me because like are other languages that exist in this world aside from English people pronounce things differently but I digress we also have G friend who have come back officially with their song called Apple and it seems a lot of fans are really surprised at the concept change and I was surprised too. I'd never seen anything like that from G friend especially 
ATs have also released a 16 minute diary film for their next comeback and also released two teaser photos along with teaser instrumentals for fans to vote on the title track of their next comeback. However, this does bring us to our next story. So within one of the teaser photos for the votes on the title song, Hong Jung is seen wearing a hairstyle that many fans have called out as culturally appropriative. Now, in response to this, a lot of fans have been emailing KQ Entertainment and have been offering templates for others to do so as well, stating that the hairstyle has a lot of historical meaning and also pointing to the history of black hair being policed. Now, Twitter is definitely like a cesspool for a lot of toxic shit, so I've seen it all. But I've definitely also seen a lot of people really trying to center education over anything else and really putting an emphasis on the fact that we can hold our idols accountable without bashing them you know it doesn't those two things don't need to be mutually exclusive which is showcased in the following tweet that reads for all the non-poc saying that his hairstyle was okay and were overreacting please Hong Jung even said that he will try not to discriminate, and there's literally nothing wrong in educating your faves when stuff like this happens, especially the hairstylist that did it. And it does seem that KQ was quite quick with their response, so they posted an update on their Cafe Dome, which states the following. From the images released on the 14th of July, AT's member Hong Jung's hair in title number two image was styled in consideration of the concept of the song without any particular purposes. Therefore, AT's and we, KQ Entertainment, did not have any intention of commercializing or depreciating other cultures at all. Through the issues of the opinions from our fans, we have become fully aware of the concerns and seriousness of the issue. From now on, we, KQ Entertainment, will try our best to fully review and check the historical backgrounds, characteristics, and the cultures in the production process. We will not create issues that were not intended nor have expected. So it's really this part of the statement that a lot of people are feeling a little bit conflicted about, and it is that they say, therefore, based on the opinions of our fans, we will change the hairstyle during the promotion and broadcasting activities that will take place after the release of this upcoming album. However, we ask for your understanding that it is not possible to edit and modify the hairstyle of the member in this album's photos, music videos, and other contents as well, as we have completed the preparation for this album. So it seems that everything might have already been printed, music videos already have been filmed, and a lot of fans are speculating that because KQ is a smaller company, they might not have the funds to just scrap all of that and refilm everything. And again, I'm always going to say this, if you are offended by something, that is valid. And if that same breath, you're part of that same community and you're not offended, it's still valid. But it doesn't cancel out what other people are feeling. And I've definitely said this in other videos that K-pop companies really need to hire someone or hire a group of people who are in charge of kind of flagging things if they are culturally insensitive or culturally appropriative. Kind of like movies have test audiences before they actually bring the movie out for the whole entire world to see. I feel like K-pop needs to kind of get on board with something similar to that. To look at the little details, to really be able to determine whether a certain hairstyle or a certain statue or whatever it may be would cause hurt or discomfort to a community. On that note, of the hairstyle if you're one of the people who are a little bit confused i'm definitely going to leave some links down below some articles so yeah the resources will be down below and i'll also pin them in a comment okay so i'm pretty much losing my voice so i'm gonna get going thank you so much if you made it this far if you did you might as well subscribe like comment and share this video with friends you don't have you can also consider joining my channel memberships where you can have a cute kevin emoji next to your name or see videos earlier or have sneak peeks depending on which level you join these are the current individuals who make up my channel members thank you so much as for me i'm gonna get going so i'll see you guys next time bye